Good afternoon and welcome to this live FNR Football Nation radio broadcast of Round 18 NPL 3 Victoria action in our continued coverage of the Melbourne Victory Academy side in season 2022. And in terms of the games, we have covered across with you live on the Facebook Live, the Twitch and the YouTube channels of Football Nation Radio. They haven't come any bigger than this. It is third taking on fourth. Melbourne victory up against Western United, an A-League men's derby, a soon-to-be A-League women's derby in the not-too-distant future as well, and a vital three points up for grabs for both these sides in their efforts to revive their chance of getting a spot in the automatic promotion places. Melbourne victory after their 1-0 loss to Preston last week see themselves trailing that top two by five points, and it's now eight after Preston's win over Whittlesea Rangers last night, so hoping to return to winning ways and keep within touching distance. But uh, speaking of touching distance, Western United are not far behind them in fourth place. They have come out of a recent form slump, just one win across their last three games and only two goals scored in that time. But despite that uh, topsy-turvy run of form, Western just three points behind victory and could draw level with a result today, but they do have to get that result because uh, not far over their shoulders as well is none awarding City who plays City, Melbourne City, of course, at the same time today. So it is heating up at the top of the NPL3 table, and to take you through it today will be myself, Lockie Flanagan, and alongside me, manning the camera and manning the, co the co commentary booth too, is Josh Parrish. Josh, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, Lockie. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll leave the heavy lifting to you today as I'll, I'll be on the visuals, but I'll chime in here and there. We are underway here at Epping Stadium. Victory, of course, playing in their traditional navy blue. And Western United in the white with the green and, back, green and black stripe down the middle. It's a good interception from Sabid and Gore. Early delivery. Loose in the box. And victory slightly nervy. Through the starting lineup for both sides as well, just quickly, and I do really have to touch on this victory lineup because they are going all out in their quest to jump back in to those top two automatic promotion places. A lot of the youngsters with A League commitments this season past are in the side. At least new face Amitalev from Melbourne City. Zayden Bello, Ryan Lethley, Nishvalu players in as well. We'll go through the rest of them as in a second as forward comes Leighton Brooks going for the early shot and there was Valupele trying the spectacular leading out the rest of that lineup Luca Persho Eli Adams coming across from the Brisbane Raw on a scholarship deal and he's straight into the U side Adam Doradovic Will Wilson Birkin Kurda Edmund Lapanchu and Leighton Brooks the victory 11 so plenty of players who have logged A League minutes season 22-23 either for victory or for clubs further afield and, uh, quite a number of them who got the chance to come off the bench and play against Manchester United last night as well obviously I'm sure if you're watching on our live stream the, the chances are you may well have actually been there for one result for Manchester United but victory did open the scoring through Chris Economides so quite a few of these young victory talents get their chance. Here's Volupele, lovely little turn with the instep. Pushing down the right, it's an inviting cross and the wind might just take it all the way in. Doubling back. With a decent degree of nerves was the Western United keeper, Ryan Medaliar. It is blowing a gale if uh, you can't see it. With the trees swaying in the breeze or if you just can't hear it outside your house, wherever you're watching. It's really probably favouring this win, the left-hand side of your screen, so victory in the first half, but it is sort of blowing diagonally at the moment across the face of the pitch, which is looking as green with my own two eyes as it does on your picture. Despite the wind, it's Quite beautiful out there at the present moment. Although a bit of a scrap in the centre circle. And Persho has his pocket picked. Carrying to attempt to win it back and is going to give away 
the free kick of your uh, let's see play out for Western picking up the dead ball on this occasion Western United talked about their recent form slump perhaps that is in part to do with some of the uh, revolving doors as a one of the new players here's a delivery decent one towards the back post Kudar gets there it's still alive in the middle eventually Taleb gets the pick up and no screams for a back pass. Yeah, the big absentee for Western United today, none other than their leading goal scorer, Jake Nidowski, with nine goals in 14, as well as Taleb Markovic, who we've seen feature a few times. A lot of the players with senior involvement aren't available today. Adam L. Hayek also missing for Western United. Quite a few who have jumped up in the past few weeks from the 21s into this top academy side. And so they might face a bit of an uphill battle today, but they've had a promising start. It's Adams back to Taleb, the new scholarship boys for victory, playing it between themselves. Lethleen put himself into danger. Eli Adams has put himself into touch. Interesting one to watch today is uh, the goalkeeper for victory, Siciliano, who had some issues with uh, back passes against Preston. Also came up with two incredible one-on-one -on -one saves last week, so he, he had a mixed afternoon last time out. Well, did have a chance to watch that full 90 minutes, Josh, for victory up against Preston. It was a, a, a tight game, or at least... Uh, at the suggestion of, of the scoreline on the day, 1-0 in favour of Preston. Did Victory mount a case that they could have perhaps taken a point out of that one? Uh, they certainly did. It was on a knife edge. Uh, Adam Duratovic had one incredible opportunity to equalise. And then Patrick Hogan, right at the end of the game, could and should have done better when the ball dropped to him from a corner kick. Of course, uh, no Paddy Hogan. In the victory side today, so many who have been regulars in this academy side have had to play second fiddle, maybe in some cases played 21s in the wake of all the senior team talents of a youthful complexion, it must be said, uh, legally, uh, drop down to play in the academy team. Uh, victory, certainly Josh, on the, uh, the basis of the lineup they're fielding today, Desperate to uh, get back into that top two automatic promotion conversation. They'll uh, be buoyed by their involvement last night. You can't help but be excited for these boys. Getting to play against Manchester United. A few of them took home some nice souvenirs as well. Leighton Brooks uh, picking up Anthony Martial's jersey after the game, after waiting patiently outside the Manchester United changing room for some time. Nice photo with, uh, with Marcus Rashford as well. Jaden Sancho, he was collecting the selfies. Yeah. 22 minutes off the bench as well. Not a bad night. I wonder how Edmund Lepanchu is feeling about it. More on that maybe in a second. This victory are on the attack here through Valupale. It's upended. A whistle from referee Luke Camilleri. Big up and under ball from Persho. Kept alive by Bello. You just see that sun start to peek out from... Behind the clouds, of course, we are live and interactive across the Football Nation Radio social channels today. Be you watching on Twitch, Facebook Live, YouTube, wherever you want, really. You can watch them all at the same time if you really like. But uh, you can leave comments in all of those places and feel free to as well. Attempt to interact with them throughout the day. Still inside the early phases of this one, but... Shan Valupale has certainly been bright. Nearly the scorer of a cross come shot inside the opening minutes. Nice ball for Doradovic. Showed a little bit too much of it to his direct marker, however.
Tomato got to be careful. Having to double back. Slapanchu. Wilson has got time and space to pick out a teammate. He's not liking a lot of what he's seeing ahead, trying to go it himself. Interception. Time from Kadua. Jack Dew on the ball. Cross to Rigagwe. It's an imposing central defensive partnership. It's going to be easy for victory to try and break through that one. Adams. Dropping short was for Lupale. One two exchange between himself and Luca Persho. There are options filtering in at the back post. Leighton Brooks is there. He might even go it himself, but a good interception on that occasion from Ajak Du. <laughs> and then around his marker, if you don't mind. Very classy from the young central defender, and he's trying to turn defense into attack now here. And so too are Western United. It's Eze who just lost the ball at the crucial moment. Brilliant work though. On the flank from Victory. Or from Western United, I should say. Oh, beautiful exchange of passes between Persho and Volupale again. Victory using class and down the right. Leighton Brooks, the early cross. Doradovic sees upon it. Got to get it away, Western. They did through Jordan Lawton. Eze. Full scoop pass. Particularly effective. Someone the quality of Birkin Kurdar. Always odds on to gobble that sort of thing up. Panchu, switching ball, intercepted. Gee, it really is blowing a gale here today, Lockie. It really is. And as we said, it, it's almost a change direction, just ever so slightly. It was blowing diagonally across the face towards the goal of victory. Now it's almost coming straight, horizontally really, uh, across the pitch, blowing directly back into our faces, that's for sure. I hope it doesn't affect the game too much, but it, it might affect your broadcast. Yeah, apologies for any wind noise that our effects mic might be picking up. We have the uh, the old wind sock on it as well, and still that doesn't seem to be doing its level best. Keep you updated on the conditions as they go on, although you'll probably be able to hear how the conditions are going. <laughs> anyway, back to Ed Edmund Lepage, Josh. We're talking about how good it was for some of these young talents to get a go against Manchester United, but he did that. Unfortunately, uh, he was involved in an, in an own goal, the last touch off him for Manchester United's fourth. How would you be feeling? Because you'd be elated, obviously, to get that opportunity, but uh, perhaps somewhat uh, embarrassed to, to have <laughs> been the recipient of that sort of thing? Yeah, it's an unfortunate one. There was very little he could do about it. I'm sure it doesn't feel good in the moment, and on such a big night in front of so many people, it's never what you want to happen, but... I don't think there was realistically anything he could do. He could do. He was just the fall guy in that situation. It's a nice interception from Regagwe. Picks it back up in the middle. He's going to get a free kick for his efforts. It certainly is. Reward for effort for Jalil Regagwe. Sauntering forward, the swashbuckling centre back, and then his efforts to win the second ball gets the free kick too. Western have taken quickly. And Gore. Ball down. Western's right flank asking a little bit too much of Kadur on this occasion. Taleb must have been aiming for the cameras on the hill. I thought you were going to play ball boy for a second there, Lucky. 
Don't have to give me too much of an invitation usually. <laughs> Just that one a little bit out of my grasp. Yeah, it's, a, it's a game that comes at a, a very fascinating time for, for both of these sides. They've just uh, faltered in the last few weeks. Obviously that loss for victory breaking a pretty sizable winning run for them. Weston has a first time shot. Taleb seeing it all the way. Weston on the other hand as we said just the three points across their last month of football and they really have. They were so competitive. They were well and truly in that sort of top two, top three conversation. I mean a few weeks ago Josh Preston were behind both of these teams and now they've managed to get the jump on them both. Yeah it's been ding-dong battle only Melbourne City has really been comfortable in their position on the table at any point and now that's even shifting so it's been a fascinating title race the entire season absolutely has and it doesn't look like it's going to go anywhere just yet on the live ladder Preston are seven points ahead of Melbourne victory after their one nil win over Whittlesea Rangers looking for Duradovic Dalia was able to watch it comfortably into his palms. Interesting story. That of Ryan Medalia. Queenslander originally has previously been a senior keeper and a youth keeper at Brisbane Strikers, Gold Coast United as well. Gold Coast Knights, in fact. Getting the chance to come down from Queensland and Worked his way past Charlie Emery to the starting keeper spot for Victory. He's a Fijian heritage as well. Both parents Fijian. He was born in Australia, but there is, I understand, a bit of interest from uh, Fijian football as to how his career will progress. Regagwe. Back to Medalia. He just got that one a little bit hot. It was a bit of a hospital pass, and he had to just clear it anywhere he could get contact with it. Yeah, did him no favours, the back pass from his teammate. But as I understand, Loggy, there are quite a few Fijian internationals playing their trade throughout the MPL ranks here in Australia, and particularly here in Victoria. 100%, particularly across the state leagues. In NPL 3 as well, there's more than one, of course, we had Smedalia. Gets that one clear, and it's a good release actually for Yanni Panakos. He just couldn't bring it under his spell, unfortunately. But great passing range from the keeper. We had uh, the Savanasa Baladroka Droka, of course. Spent a bit of time with Dufton. He's also a, he's a full Fijian international, if I understand correctly. I wonder if he was on the uh, recruitment offensive when they played Western United. <laughs> Perhaps he's now back at back at Frankston Pines, where there are a host of Fijian international too. Be looking at some future Australian internationals here. Who knows? Who knows? Certainly, there are talents with promising statistics wherever you look. Keeping one eye on number eight for Western United today, and he does have a very noticeable, almost dare I say, David Louise sort of mop swaying about in the breeze. It's Greg. Siamoa. In fact, that's Jordan Lawton. That is Jordan Lawton. <laughs> Number 20 is Greg Siamoa. There's the man who just won that header there. I will still keep, be keeping my eyes on Jordan Lawton if for no other reason than the haircut. There's a he's got the chance to drive at Zayden Bello. Leighton Brooks coming back to provide the double coverage, but in doing so, gives away a free kick to Western United in a decent position. Anyway, the reason I brought up Greg Siamar, as he's been fast-tracked out of the 21s in the absence of Jack Nidovsky into the seniors, and his goal record at 21 level, 22 goals in 14 games, which is uh, quite a sad, including, including seven goals in a single game against Ballarat City. Final score was 9 nil, so he's got seven of nine, which is quite crazy. So Decent return. Western United's striking stocks working well at the moment. It's a nicely shaped delivery from Igor, having to stretch down to it. Lapanchu, solid clearance. And run for that errant pass from Persho. It could have set victory on their way. Mello 
Rose under pressure from Eze has to go back to Taleb. Those high balls, they get lost in the wind. So difficult for either back forward to have to try and deal with. Wouldn't be surprised to see this game broken open by a defensive laps. I see the super interception from Holmes in the center circle. And then from Sabit and Gore. Oh, an excellent work from Jordan Lawton. He lost his footing, the ground gave way underneath him. And yet he still had the presence of mind to get that head with the, uh, the David Louise hair atop it to find a teammate. And it's kept victory, it's kept Western, I should say, alive, only for the moment. Great first touch from Brooks. Wilson ahead, and that's the direction in which the ball travels. Now he needs to get across into the middle. Blazed away. He had Adam Doradovic waiting for it, and he slaps the hands against the quads and gestures to his teammate. I think he could have done a little bit better with that. Another opportunity going begging, and it's the story of victory in some of these big games. Certainly was last week. In form, Adam Doradovic, he was one of those players, Josh, last week who had a big chance slipping by on the header. But other than that, he has been in pretty decent form in the last month. Five goals in his last four, so no surprise that he wants better service. Bello. It's a hot pass for Will Wilson. Kurdar didn't hear the call. Panakos through the legs of Lapanchu, and now it is back to Panakos, but the linesman on this broadcast side. I took a look at him instantly, and you could see he had to, had to resist the urge to instinctively raise the flag. You've got to obviously delay it now until the player actually makes contact with the ball, and eventually that flag did see. Brush against the wind, held aloft, and you would have seen that as well on our live coverage. Over goes the effects microphone. <laughs> In that kind of a day. The gusts of wind are so strong here, it's it's nearly blowing over the camera with every <laughs> every I'm gale. A bit worried about the table at the moment, <laughs> to be honest with you. Batten down the hatches, everybody. There's a really tornado is. coming. I feel like Dorothy. <laughs> anyway. There's no place like home, Lockie. Like yeah, here's left lean. Well, that certainly has been the case victory this season, Josh Parrish. Their record at Epic Stadium, absolutely brilliant. Would you believe that their loss last week to Preston, their only loss at Epic Stadium this season, and that does include their win against a win and draw against Whittlesea Rangers, at both home and away. Yeah, it is a happy hunting ground for them, Fortress Epping. Seven, one, and one, their full record for the season at this venue. It does have a bit of a fortress look, actually, the grandstand. I wish there was a bit more of it at the moment, though, it must be said. A break on potentially the ball played across in the direction of Sabit and Gore. He's just coming back from an offside position there. A victory striker less than impressed with the decision of the. Western United have got it back in play. Through Holmes. It's Shamoon who's taken an advanced position out of fullback. One way, then the other. And Zayden Bello standing his ground well and truly. Right decision in the end.
I'm most definitely not in Kansas anymore. No, we're just about hanging on to our position <laughs> in Epic. Anyway, we've managed to uh, anchor down the effects mic now, so apologies for any of the big audio crackles. Luckily, the, uh, the main microphones firmly in our hands. You have to pry this one off me. Sticking in to the 25th minute in Melbourne. Victory have got themselves a free kick right past the halfway line. Adam Doradovic has tunnelled under the ball. Adam Doradovic who's enjoyed a bit of a chance in recent weeks to train with the Victory senior side. A reward for effort given his recent run in front of goals, as we've mentioned. I did find it cu curious that he was withdrawn at halftime of the Preston game. Despite the miss in the first half, I thought mm. he was offering some real presence up front that they lacked in the second half. And the second half ended up being a bit devoid of opportunities for victory. And I wonder whether his absence had a part to play in that. He, of course, may have been in the frame be part of the squad to face Manchester United. That might have been something to do with the minutes restriction, but he didn't end up making the squad, so a little bit curious, that substitution from yeah, Joe Palazzini's. I, I thought so too. See Bello has picked up the ball here nicely. Now forward for Wilson. Slight hesitation as he goes one way, then the other. Now direct towards goal, and it bounces across the face. Gee, if this for late few metres further ahead, he might have well had an empty net to tap into. But a lot of their good stuff down that right flank so far in this opening half hour has come courtesy of Will Wilson and if his uh, first final ball a few minutes earlier for Artem Taradovic wasn't the best, that one was far more enterprising. starting to hurt Western United down the flanks. Here's a free kick for Melbourne Victory. Intercepted in the middle, wide for Ngor. Quite seen the best of him, but he is a danger man for victory. Taking the ball in his stride, running it out of play, and ends up on the turf, salting the wounds. That's a beaten Gore. Six goals to his name. Presently, the absence of Jake Nidelski, the leading scorer for Western. Although it has been weeks now since his last goal in the green and black. If I'm not mistaken, he's got form for scoring at Epping, albeit against Whittlesea, which is a, it's a very different proposition. Victor, we've got an injured player on the turf here. I saw a yellow card out there, Lockie. somewhat surprised that referees managed to keep the yellow card in his hand. We've got a, I'm just looking over at the, the corner flag, Josh, on this, this left hand broadcast side, so on the, on the scoreboard side when you're watching at home, and it is, it is nearly horizontal. It's making a, a less than 45 degree, a less than 90 degree angle with, uh, with the ground. It's Luca Persho, the player on the turf. We're hoping that he is all good and right to continue. Did obviously suffer a hamstring injury that knocked him out of play a few months ago against North Sunshine Eagles. He was a first half substitute that time around. There is a bit of concern here from 
Joe Palacides and Co. That, that same situation might be rearing its ugly head. In the meantime as well, in the aftermath there was a uh, yellow card for Korea Kadua. Western United. Back underway, Luca Persho going to continue to be attended to for the time being. Shout out to all of you watching currently across the uh, Football Nation Radio Facebook, YouTube and Twitch channels. Make sure you keep your comments coming through. Let us know where you're watching from. Hopefully not several hundred feet in the air if you, as you've been swept up by the gusts. scores around the grounds as well because Nana Wadding who have been in great form of late do have a big game over at Parade College against top of the table Melbourne City which is a result that would have very big implications for these sides beautiful first time pass from Doradovic the loop play waiting for the options to materialise at the back post was Leighton Brooks but a great header to save the day from Charbel Shamoon Still alive for victory. Persho back onto the field. Kurdar one way, then the other. This win is just making every ball into the penalty box a nervy moment for all those tasks to defend it. Kadua. Bending Nish for Lupale on that occasion. Nothing illegal in the eyes of Luke Camilleri. Holmes. Cross for Shamoon, who's got a bit of panic to enter into. Had further afield the option of Oviora Eze. He's trying to win back the ball here. Melo doing well. The captain's job. That's <laughs> one captain to another. Gargwe making the block. As a good use of the body, legal use of the body, heads down but under his own steam, says Luke Camilleri. Victory got to be careful here. Lapanchu nearly played himself into trouble. Luckily, the rebound fell back at his feet. Otherwise, it could have been a, another unfortunate moment potentially for Edmund Lapanchu. Side for Duradovic. That's a great switch of play, all things considered, from Noah Holmes. And that set Kadur on his way. It's an early cross. Left lean. It's one boot and then the second. Get out of danger. Duradovic. I don't know how much he knew about it, but ended up with the ball there. Narcos tussling with Bello. He's back on the ball. Inside for Persho. He's got a chance to wheel and go. And that ball, well intentioned though it might have been, lost to the elements here at Epic Stadium. There's been no shortage of those passes today. And I'm not sure whether that's the, that's the best idea. We've seen a lot of that name over the years and indeed this season at Epic Stadium. One part of the trio of Lawton brothers. Leighton, a Ballarat City player. Brandon as well, obviously at Hume City now, but a former Victory Youth. Would have applied his trade at Epic Stadium on a handful of occasions. And at Amy Park too. Panchu is going to deal with that one, although he's under pressure from Siamoa, and that does enough to force the turnover. 
Lawton, the early drive, and it curls all the way away from the frame of goal. Gee, it looked good off the boot, it didn't did, it? It did look really good. <laughs> Ended up being nowhere near, but the way he struck that, very, very promising, and I think the wind might have played its part on just how far off target that ended up. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but dare I say, that could have been shades of David Luiz there, because he, he did that have that in his locker. It might come again here for Western United. In Gore, the lay down, and Taleb luckily got up, but a good shot on the half volley from Eze. He's been promising so far on that left-hand side for Western, I thought. Zayden Bello is a player who often looks quite comfortable at this level, but he's been given a task by Weston's number 37 so far today. Brooks left the ball behind. Easy one in the end for Ajak Du. Clattering rebound is going to spill for Wilson. Luckily, for Western United, Adjak Ju was there to release the danger. Duradovic, the risky challenge, into the back pocket. Luke Camilleri's hand goes, and out comes a yellow card for the victory striker. Yeah, I think that's a spot on decision there. It was a dangerous lunge, and it's come at some cost. The player he, he collected. Charbel Shamoon, the left fullback for victory. Currently receiving some medical treatment for Western United, of course. Actually, speaking of Melbourne victory left backs, it is interesting to see uh, Eli Adams, of course, he had a bit of a breakout year over in Queensland with Brisbane Raw. Seven appearances and assist to his name. A bit of a, an attacking light off the bench, but here he is playing fullback under Joe Palazzini's. He was part of the squad last night against Manchester United as well. And that's interesting. I, I wonder if that's just a sort of needs are as needs must kind of situation, or if it's uh, maybe, maybe Victor have spotted something in Eli Adams that perhaps Warren Moon so we didn't. Well, if he wants to get some first team minutes, left back would be a decent place to do it. not the worst place to go, you are right. And especially considering considering uh, Victory's dearth of left backs at the moment, you know, with Jason Davidson departing the club. Only really Noah Smith is the, the recognised left back at the moment, so he could stake a claim in that position if he makes it his own. Although I can't help but wonder what Jackson Lino might have to say about that, given he has been the regular first choice. Misses today with an accumulation of yellow cards. James Benares also absent for victory. Got themselves into a nice advanced position here. Brooks floating it in over the top and out for a Western goal kick. It really is a surprise that we haven't seen more crosses struck along the ground. I guess it does help you in in, in some way to, to be crossing towards a keeper and putting it in that corridor of uncertainty, which today is <laughs> it's a pretty wide corridor. <laughs> I think the corridor of uncertainty today is the pitch. It's one. like the highway <laughs> of uncertainty. <laughs> Can't even get the ball to stay still from the goal kick. It's the sort of day it's been so far. Although, the elements notwithstanding, it's been an enterprising contest. Brooks is going to go for the early drive, a dip towards Medallia on the way through. Again, we're seeing shots hit sweetly, but not beating the keeper. Almost ref reminiscent of uh, football with the Javulani. <laughs> it's hard to get one on target, but if you do, you could fool the goalkeeper. Speaking of fooling the goalkeeper, Wilson is round the keeper, but he's offside. Flag went up straight away, but this idea from Eli Adams trying to catch 
the Western United defence snapping. Although they would say that we, we played our, our offside trap perfectly and caught Will Wilson out there. I do love Will Wilson's work off the ball. I think that's what's endeared him to the victory coaching hierarchy and has resulted in that professional deal because he just makes such good runs. He's always moving when he doesn't have it. He's a hard player to deal with. Lean in a bit of danger, going for the safety of Taleb. Paneris has flicked that one nicely on and in play for Will Wilson. Victory have got pretty much level numbers here. Back to Brooks and Dew having enough time and presence of mind to control with the side foot rather than clearing away. And it might work to the advantage of United here. The left-hand side is Yanni Panakos. He's got form for scoring against victory, but he couldn't fool Edwin Lapanchu. Happy to stay standing and let the marker run into him. Uh, Taleb across the left lane. Taleb, of course, crossing Melbourne Derby divide, earning himself a scholarship contract with victory until 2023-24. Did play a handful of games for the city side that currently are the table toppers in NPL three. It's a loose touch from Nishan Valupale. Western couldn't make him pay. The peroxide hair and the contact and the free kick too. Do you want to know who uh, Burkhan Kurdow managed to get a shirt off last night, Lockie? Uh, sure. Enlighten me. His uh, midfield opponent, Fred. Wow. That's it. I wonder what number Fred would be in the pecking order. I wonder, <laughs> did they just have a good battle or did he specifically want Fred? Anyway, more on that later. Here's Yanni Panakos. It's a nice little reverse pass looking for Samoa. Let's locate him. Not a bad idea. Good interception from Will Wilson. Did the hard part there. Made that look pretty easy. Getting involved physically, picking up the ball, but then he had Leighton Brooks to his right hand side. Sort of split the middle of both players that he had nearby. Now we've got an injury concern here for Western United. It's Jalil Rogagwe on the turf. Not a player that Western would want to lose by any stretch of the imagination. Their captain. He's formed a pretty imposing partnership. Jack Jew, not only in this game, but over the course of the season. I really liked what I've seen from Jack Jew today. Just he's had a few times where he's been called into action, and more often than not, in a kind of situation where it would be easy for especially young players to, to panic and maybe lose their composure, he does hold his nerve and, and doesn't clear away out of danger, just takes a touch and is able to pick out a teammate. He's very comfortable on the ball, Ajak Dayo. I've seen him play in the middle of midfield as well. He's more comfortable at centre-back, I would say, but has the technical aptitude to be able to play as a holding midfielder as well, which I think gives him a real comfort on the ball. Offside is Will Wilson as we start to get towards the half-time break. We are goalless at Epic Stadium. We haven't had too much in the way of chances to bring to you, but there has been some quality play in between the penalty boxes. Victory might have something to say about that, though. Jew doubling back. Oh, beautiful work on the ball. Again, a moment where he could have been forgiven for clearing. Gerardovic, not entirely 
certain as to whether that was a cross or a shot from the tight angle. But either way, it's a deep victory throw. And interesting to see that the corner flag over there is perfectly outstanding. <laughs> Looks very different to the other corner flags that are here today. Eli Adams showed too much of it to Ingore. Has to give away the foul and is going to head into the book as well. Not the best piece of play from young Eli Adams. Yeah, I think he's showing his uh, comfort as a winger on that occasion. Mm, yes, yes. Come Certainly on. not a natural defensive player and that's something that Western United can potentially exploit today. Particularly when you've got someone the quality of Sabine Gore going directly at him. Holmes turns his way out of trouble. Got the shout from his teammates, which was pleasing to see because he was about to do a, a blind turn into some significant danger. Offside. SA on that occasion. How many times have we seen players caught offside coming back mm. to receive the ball today? It's been a repeat feature of this match so far, as have slightly ill disciplined challenges in the middle of the park. Well, it is a matchup that at senior level is very much a derby, and they do feel that at the youth level too. He would like to strike first. Wilson, 1-2 with Brooks. Cut back in the middle of the loop. They just couldn't free the feet. And Western United get the ball out of danger. That was certainly the closest we've come to an opener so far. Inches. Inches in it. I mean, what an effortless manoeuvre down the right flank that was from Wilson and Brooks. Unfortunately, the Lupule just couldn't get his boots right at the end of it. But they just, both of them just gliding across the surface. You can see the class of those two players in particular and why they've been involved so often at senior level. Yeah, there's been a few occasions today where they have combined on that right flank and pretty much had a game amongst themselves. Adams. Wasn't the prettiest, but he's held onto the ball. That's why the attempted intervention of Sabine and Gore play with the fast feet. Something that he <laughs> wasn't quite able to activate when that cross came in from Leighton Brooks. So we're in to first half stoppage time. One more chance perhaps. Wilson has kept this in play. Taradovic nearby, but Ragagwe. Beautiful work from the central defender. Right before the commentator's curse decided it was time to strike. Brooks double back and the support comes from Wilson and that's going to bring us to an end here in this first half goalless deadlocked at nil all as Melbourne victory and Western United head into the sheds in this all important third versus fourth clash wind and the elements have been the focal point they haven't been too much in the way of shots on goal but victory right before the half certainly coming closest a great move down the victory right Saw a ball into the middle and unfortunately for the home side victory, Nishan Valupale just couldn't get it all sorted to tap into the net past Ryan Udalia. But this game absolutely up for grabs and it looks like a moment could be enough to decide it, Josh. Yeah, it's, it could be one of those games where it's either a moment of brilliance or, an, or more likely in these conditions, an error. And... Uh, who that falls remains to be seen, but I think victory have been the more positive of the two sides so far. And uh, if they had pinched the lead there, it would have been a deserved one. Well, it's anyone's guess as to what direction this game is going to head in the second half. We'll join you for it. Myself, Lockie Flanagan and Josh Parrish in about 15 minutes time.
Welcome back to the second half of action here at Epping Stadium. Third, taking on fourth. Melbourne victory against Western United in a Yong battle off the bridge in Melbourne's north. And those all important automatic promotion places. The area of the table in which these two teams are vying, but they need to get a win to give themselves any chance. Victory looking the most likely after the first 45 as Bello hits that on the half volley and just stays in the bounds of play. Most, for the most part in these uh, trying conditions for players. Teams more often than not limited to pot shots from outside the box. Could be but a single flashpoint that sends the game in favour of either side. Western United, of course, could draw level with Melbourne victory in third on 32 points. If they get the win today, victory got a win to stay within touching distance from Preston. A, a loss today would make it an almost impossible task, an eight-point gap between them and Preston in second. Of course, these two teams will also have the uh, the root of the Pro-Rail playoffs between MPL 2 and 3, third and fourth place sides, which uh, you're currently looking at, take on 11th and 12th in MPL 2. So their chances aren't dead just yet, but they'd like to make it a guaranteed thing. They've got to win today, though, if they want to. Taking you through it as we were in the first half, myself, Lucky Flanagan. And Josh Parrish. It's delicate. Poise, Josh. It is indeed. And as you say, there's a chance that at the end of the season everybody wins and everybody goes up. But that would involve that pro rail playoff you were talking about. As you say, eight points be an almost insurmountable gap for Melbourne victory should they fail to win today. Seven points, of course, if it ends all square. Who's impressed you in the first half, Lockie? It's been, as you say, trying conditions. A pretty scrappy game so far, but there have been some moments of quality. Who's stood out to you? Gee, it's a, it, it's a good question, Josh. I think it, a lot of players have, have stood out in moments as opposed to across the course of what's now 49 minutes of action. I've got to say the two central defenders for Western United have, have really caught my eye. Jalil Ragagwe and Ajak Deu, both of whom thought they had defending to do, but Will Wilson, who arguably I think you could make, make a case for him being victory's best, Probably the standouts. But I think I think for victory, their absolute best, uh, which we have seen on some occasions, from uh, from Leighton Brooks and Will Wilson, we just haven't seen it constantly. We haven't seen it consistently over the game, but they've got moments of quality, and that might be enough. Someone who also has that at their disposal, Sabitin Gore. Delicate little cross in. It's going to sit for Lawton on the edge of the box. Gore again, just digging it out. Ente at the back post. Missed the header. And keeps the ball at Weston's feet. It's a decent play from them. Panakos now back inside for Eze. Centrally and victory eventually through Zayden Bello. Well, half cleared. Seems to me, Lockie, that if one of these teams is going to score, they're going to have to do the old uh, Arsene Wenger's Arsenal and literally walk the ball in. Because as soon as the ball goes airborne, Everything goes haywire. It's like you're yeah, yeah, pulling down the, uh, the the crank on a lotto machine. You just don't know what's going to come up next, really. Shamoon was thinking about the long drive. Now it's Holmes. Actually quite liked what I've seen from Obiora Eze. Ball in at the back post. Kept alive, only for a moment, by Sabitin Gore. It's a good start for Western United. 
play themselves into trouble. Dahlia, who gets it away. Difficult one to control for Charvel Shamoon. Made it look better than it was, perhaps. Could only do so much. Brooks. Fighting past one. Receiving the one two from Volupale. Back the other way for Wilson. He's got a lot in the way of support, although Volupale. He's alive on the edge of the box. Great one, too. Now the ball central, and Volupale has hooked it. Absolutely hooked it. It's a fresh air swing, isn't it? Barely makes contact. The ball just bobbling for him at the wrong moment. That was a clear cut chance, as clear cut a chance as we've seen. Absolutely, and not the first time today. Unfortunately for Nishan, not the first time he's had a ball played well to him, into the middle, and he couldn't find that finishing touch, slip past his grasp, but that motivation perhaps for victory as Will Wilson has stayed on side, now he gets the cutback again, and Volupale has another try, he does make the contact, but Dahlia is able to make the save for Western United, but there we go, that's our, that's our big chance marked down, and this game looks as though it's opening up, as now Western United the other way, and Gore... Pay the favour to Greg Siamoa. Free kick going the way of Melbourne Victory. Much of the headway has come down the right flank for Victory through Leighton Brooks and Nishan Volupale has been in the right place at the right time on a couple of occasions and hasn't been able to apply the finishing touches. Panarkos, the early drive, Yanni Panarkos! Draws first blood for Western United. It's been a blistering start to this second half. Melbourne Victory have had a few good chances down the right-hand side of the field. But Yanni Panakos, we said it, Josh. It was going to take a moment of inspiration. And Yanni Panakos with a thunderbolt. And again, he scores against Melbourne Victory. It's absolutely stunning. Against the run of play, it must be said. A couple of victory chances in quick succession. Yanni Panakos seized his opportunity. He hit that so beautifully, and it's flown into the top corner. Nothing Taleb could do. Absolutely plumb from Yanni Panakos. He had a great viewing angle of that strike. It has been so, so hard to get the ball to do what you want it to today in these conditions. But you wouldn't have known it watching that goal from Yanni Panakos. What a strike! More than worthy of opening the scoring in any game as important as this one. And he's now victory in a really interesting spot here. They have been, Josh, as you said, probably creating the better of the chances, but now find themselves behind. Scoring one goal has been hard enough, let alone two. Dayu can't get it away. Doradovic on the swivel, a fine save from Mudalia. Another one for him in the Western net. Great stop. Well anticipated, good positioning, good reflexes. It was well hit from Adam Doradovic. But Yanni Panakos, if I'm not mistaken, scored in that losing effort. Yep. First time He's, out. He has only scored two goals for this season. Both of them now have been against Melbourne Victory. He saves it for the Battle of the Bridge. Fair enough. Now, do Victory have a response? Wicked ball in from Persho, but away at the first time of asking. By Kadua, who did not go into the book in the first half. As a correction, it was Obiora Eze, who's on the ball now, trying to play through Panakos. decent talents to call on on the bench if they need to readdress the balance, although it's a pretty strong starting 11 that's already out there. And maybe a bit stunned to find themselves behind. Well, certainly when we saw the team sheets, Lockie, a lot more experience in that victory team than Western United. This is a major upset if Western can pull it off based on the team selected today. Of course, not played on paper. 
manner of leading lights. Jake Nidovsky, his replacement, Siamoa, hitting it down. That clearance is going to fall the way of Weston. There's a, with the initial touch, now Lepanchu. No handball from Luke Camilleri. The deflection enough to give victory the goal kick. And certainly, Birkin Kerda mounting his case to the referee that it should have been a free kick to be in with. What a back heel from Luca Persho. Making sure he couldn't quite make it count the other end, but he's back on the ball here. And another back heel, back to back. Today you corkscrewing that one out of play. If anything, victory you probably gained some meterage from that clearance. Yeah, anywhere will do. That sort of situation, they've been able to get some numbers behind the ball, at least Weston. Adams. It's a difficult first half, but it's a great ball forwards for Duradovic. Cut it back, but not accurately. Will Wilson was there and could have struck. Had have found him. I'm just not sure he scanned before he passed there. He just assumed that his teammate would be square of him. Yeah, he sort of, he sort of got the head down, didn't he? Not too much uh, thought necessarily going into it. Nice work from Lawton and Western United could be away here. For a three on two, and it's a good pass or a well-intentioned one for Sir Beaton Gore, but slightly overhit and not hit accurately. I think with the composure of some of Victory's play in the final third or lack thereof always been the case, but sometimes they've got more time than they think they do. Wilson, right-footed cross, Dayu, and then Regagwe, the two centre-backs combining to knock it out of danger. Well, Wilson, certainly with his movement out of midfield, trying his darndest to make things happen. Newly minted senior player for Melbourne Victory. Kurda, the outside of the football for Velupale. Little ball roll, the check inside. Velupale! Oh my goodness me. Leighton Brooks with an open header in a central position. And he got the timing of the jump all wrong, ballooning his effort over the crossbar. That's a shocking miss, you have to say. He was from point blank range there. Ball came in at some velocity, but you can't be missing that. Absolutely stunning. Melbourne uh, victory, uh, Joe Palazzini's can scarcely believe that they are behind in this game. Shamoon. Well, that's, that's quite funny. Leighton Brooks uh, picked up a few Melbourne Victory shirts just then. He was trying to get Charvel Shamoon's as well. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure he would have been asking to get it signed like Anthony Martial's last night. Picks it up high up the park there, but a good covering challenge from Birkin Kurda, who did one win back the ball. Getting there first. How many times have we said that today, Jalil Regagwe? Although victory are increasingly unsettling that Western United back four, particularly on the flanks. Certainly that's making the going harder for the two men in the centre of defence. Beautiful fast feet from Volupale. It's going to fall back to him by Fortune. Can he get the ball in? A few questions being asked. Potential contact against the arm of Cordea Kadur. Nothing doing from Luke Camilleri. Show. Skips his way 
across the field. Adams, he gets a chance to drive out of fullback. Eli Adams, Sabine and Gore has come back to cover him off. Good work for the moment from Weston's defense. Could be another wave on the way. Hershow on the swivel, collected through the back and after lengthy period actually of consideration from Luke Camilleri. Eventually he does whistle in victory's favour as the home side are prepping a double sub. Noah Holmes a little bit unfortunate there. Just collected player and ball almost simultaneously and could easily have been let run by a more lenient official. We often see some lenient officiating at this level. We do. Perhaps not so uh so much the case when it's two academy sides playing. Well, it's, I mean, it's so physical of a league, the NPL 3, that sort of comparatively speaking, there are a lot of fouls that you might have to say, well, yeah, in another competition, that is. Here's victory taking the quick free kick. The invention, Wilson denied the chance by Mudalia. Still alive through left lean at the near post and blazed over the top again. This time, the guilty party, Edmund Lepanchu, Turned one into his own net yesterday in the friendly against Melbourne Victory. Nearly had one in the right one on the other end here at Epic. And he's going to be uh, subbed off for that as well, it looks like. I'm sure the change was prepared earlier, but uh, that's never... Uh, it's a bit demoralising, isn't it? Your final touch, being the blaze one over the crossbar. Yes. And, uh, interestingly, Leighton Brooks is going to come off early for Joe Palazzini's side as well. Of Binyam Kebede. So, a bit of a surprising sub for you, Josh? Yeah, I think he might be on a senior minutes restriction based on his involvement last night. But, uh, certainly, he's been one of Mick Victory's more impressive players, and coming off around the 70 minute mark, he's, he's accustomed to that at this point, given he moves between squads so often, and they need him fit and available for the coming A League season. Mm. Well, the other entrant onto the field in place of Edmund Lepanchu, big bad Reese Bozanowski, the towering central defender who's just making his way back into the Victory Academy side having spent the A-League men's season with Wellington Phoenix. Well, he'll play against his brother next week, Jack Bozanowski of Preston Lions. Yes. Very before that as well. Be interesting for Preston as well, having a Macedonian international playing up against them, or a youth international, I should say. Bozanowski with a handful of caps last year, alongside Stefan Kolakowski, if memory serves me right. Shambel Shamoon is on the turf for Western United, and his number might be about to be called. Safe some treatment. Two Bozanovskis in the squad, if uh, I recall correctly. Reese and Matt, different teams. No relation between those two, though. I know. Would be a, I would imagine, although not, there would have to be a, an A League men's uh, winners medal separating them as well. So, uh, Binyam Kibede, just behind play there, has uh, gone into the book. Interesting. Maybe Luke Camilleri wasn't a fan of what he had to say. I'm not sure what he would necessarily be complaining about. Yeah, he was signalling use of the arm. That's what it looked like to me. Panarkos. It's a tough one for Taleb. He took the chest mark in the end, but... Pretty violent whip, unsurprisingly. The delivery from the game's only goal scorer so far, Yanni Panakos, and what a goal it was. Have another substitution now. Well, it's gone double bubble on the double subs. Both sides electing to bring two players on and off at the same time. And it's actually going to be Yanni Panakos. One of the two 
to exit the field of play alongside of your uh, Etze. Impressed with Etze this afternoon, Lockie? Yeah, I have been. I thought, thought he uh, had a really enterprising game down this left-hand side, particularly when you consider that he has been, for the most part this season, an under-21s player. It was his first start for the top academy side just last week after five sub-appearances before that. So for a second start at NPL 3 football, I thought that was not a bad performance at all. Lupale, wide for Cabete, who is flagged offside. Maybe expect a little bit more sharpness from the substitute. Perhaps he's just still coming right back after the speed of the game. It's interesting to see Cabete play not as an out-and-out -out forward as he was at the beginning of the season, but increasingly used on the flank. He had one very enterprising run against Preston last week where he beat two players and Perhaps to teed up a goal. As the sun comes out again and we get a nice glare across the stadium. Had pretty much all four seasons today, but the one constant has been the gales of wind. Yes. Still coming through, and they're going to make it very hard for Binyam Cabete to make a fist of that one. Now, I think you could just about abandon the left to right switch for victory at this point. With the sun where it is, it'd be nigh on impossible to track the ball in flight. Bello. Inside for Kurda. Plenty of paddock to gallop into. Not much in the way of attractive passing options. Persho again showing his class with the ball at feet. West is victory in a bit of a lull at the moment. Weston have got quite a few behind the ball. Cabete and Falupale combining. It's just going to stick to Zayden Bello. Well, it's a great ball over the top for Volupale. Wilson nearby. Hershow's attempted pass back to Will Wilson, I think, just came off the boot of a Western defender. It wasn't a convincing or commanding touch, but it was enough. Apologies for any uh, obnoxious JJ Abrams style lens flares here. Battle the conditions in one way or another. Now, I've just been, as the game's been going on, Josh, trying to uh, run the numbers on my spreadsheet because I see there's a number nine on for Western United. And uh, wasn't named on the initial team sheet, but coming off the bench, might that be perhaps Jake Nidovsky onto the field of play? The player who did definitely make his way on and he's just turned it over there, Zach Kokonkowski. Initially named in the uh, official team sheet that gets submitted to the referees. No number nine as far as the eye can see, but Victory's usual number nine is, or Western United's usual number nine, sorry, in this competition is Jake Nidovsky. So if that is indeed him, that is a big, big introduction. I think we'll go with that, Lockie. It's our best hypothesis of a mystery player. 
just let the ball run past him on this occasion. Victory. I need to find another level here. Had a few good chances since going behind, but it's been a good five to ten minutes since their last one. And a draw really is not enough for them. Preston would have a seven-point lead. They need the win. It's going to have to happen sooner rather than later. There is still 20 minutes plus stoppage for them to do it in. Adams. Hesitation on the edge of the box. Early shot wide from Eli Adams. They just gave him an inch. The Western defence and Eli Adams attempted to extract a mile. Well, it's the first time we've got to see him in that kind of position in the final third, which is his natural role. So we await yet another double substitution. It's the first team aspirants continue to make way for victory. Luca Persho and Birkin Kurda coming off and it's Alex Menelau just have confirmation of that second player in a moment, although he didn't believe in confirming it is Nick Hamakiotis. I believe you're right, Lockie. Alex Menelau, another player who got the chance to play last night against Manchester United, came off, or came on rather, as an 88th minute sub for Lee Broxham. Very, very good company. Ready to spring into action there, yeah. Lockie. The ball fell short. They're uh, the worst people to uh, <laughs> trade a place on, on the bench with. <laughs> Alex Menelau, I believe, the, uh, the younger brother of Dennis. Of course, a star forward for Northcote City in the NPL 2. Alex himself, a former Northcote junior. Playing against each other next year, if all goes well. Very good point. Although, they want to guarantee that fact. If they want to guarantee that fact, Alex Menelau is going to have to try and inspire this victory side to something better than what they've showed in the recent phases. They've also got to make sure that Western United don't come at them the other way on the break and nick a second that would probably wrap this game up. Kyothis flicking that one over the top. Volupole has latched onto it. Nishan Volupole hitting the turf. And Luke Camilleri does not oblige the shouts of penalty, penalty from the victory players. I didn't think there was too much in it, Josh. Didn't seem like a whole lot of contact. Certainly wasn't Stonewall, let's say. done well to keep that in play. Lupule was offside, but Duradovic wasn't. Now he launches the step overs around Dayu. Dangerous flick. Kadua getting whatever he could to get it out. And an away from victory players, but it nearly ended up in the back of his own net. It's yet another nearly moment for victory in those sorts of positions. Final shot, final pass hasn't been there today. Beautiful cross, Cabete's there. He got up, but he didn't get it in. It's astonishing, like the amount of chances they've missed in this second half. This side has been so prolific this season, it's really been defensively, it's been their problem if you look at the stats. But the last couple of weeks, total reversal of fortunes. They have, with 33 goals scored for the season, the second best attack in the NPL 3. Better than Preston above them. Second only to ladder leaders, Melbourne City. It's not as if Western United 
came into this game with the most blistering of goal-scoring form. They'd scored only two in the last month of games leading up to this, and they were both in one game. So they'd gone back-to-back games, held scoreless. And that is not something you can say about this fixture. Yanni Benarkos scoring right after the halftime break. And it is a stunning strike to separate these sides. Western United are, it's quite interesting how these sides have approached managing their, their most promising players in an altogether different way. Victory starting there, says there's a mix up here at the back, Sabit and Gore to kill the game! Sabit and Gore has potentially sealed it for Western United, capitalizing on a mix up at the back. Melbourne victory, Lethlin and Bozanowski. New teammates in the centre of defence, ostensibly speaking. And in the confusion, forward came Sabit and Gore. And it is a horror moment for victory that's probably delivered Western the three points. Smash and grab. Three words to sum that up. It's been all victory for most of this second half, but Western United have seen the net bulge twice and they played it to perfection. Hasn't that made this race for automatic promotion all the more different and all the more difficult for Melbourne victory? It is going to take a Herculean effort for them to turn this one around now. Is a, a comeback worthy of a top two team? Sabit and Gore with goal number seven of the season. Do victory have an instant response? Binyam Kabere, it's been spilled by Mudalia, but he's able to get back the loose ball, but a heart in mouth moment for the Western keeper. Well, in contrast to victory, who are in the space of two weeks seeing a dream of automatic promotion fade, Western United can see an unlikely path opening up for them. Of course, next week's game against Preston Lions becomes so, so crucial. James into the path of Siamoa, cross-blocked out for a western corner. If there are any Preston observers watching this game, they'd be pretty happy with the scoreline, but it does give Western United belief, doesn't it? Yeah. Heading into it, next week. And it is at BT Connor Reserve, which is a, a massive, massive field. And there is perhaps some level of nervousness, some hesitation from Preston because of uh, you know, how much that big pitch can aid in some occasions the academy sides with their ball playing as that cross comes in at the near posts. Siamoa couldn't get the contact but victory hesitating to get it clear here. Bello nipping at the heels. Kokonkovsky and winning the ball back. Now inside Siamoa couldn't get the pass through for Ngor. Honestly, you wouldn't know Western United were 2-0 up at the moment. They are chasing a third. And after a few minutes of delay, he was going to come on at the next stoppage, but the next stoppage just happened to be the second goal for Western United. And now off comes Greg Siamoa and Abel Malati is onto the field of play. Very gifted dribbler, Abel Wilati. Very slippery character when he gets on the ball, so keep an eye out for that. He's got some pace about him as well. Dare I say, not the kind of player you would want running at you on the break. But Victory really have no choice. They have to take these risks as they reach for their final change to the next stoppage. Interestingly, Franco Lino looks like the player up over on the grandstand side. This ball's going to sit up for Doradovic. Doesn't have a lot of help nearby. Jack Dayu did though. Kadua. With good hustle. To thwack that one away. It's actually
actually. We've, we've got actually, interestingly, Josh, two players who have been on the field today with, with quite the TikTok following. Obviously, we know that Burke and Kurt are, uh, has grown uh, something of a, a claim over on that, uh, that social media platform. But um, in addition to his, uh, his leading lights... Kadur also, I believe, has something in the vicinity of 10,000 followers. So, there you go. That's more than I have, Lockie. <laughs> Footballing and influencing. Get, get a young player who can do you both. Here come Weston. Down the left, it's Shamoon sauntering out a fullback, but shot got all wrong in the end, unfortunately. And the wind's actually blowing in the opposite direction, so you can't blame that. Uh, yep. Blustery conditions as um, we uh, was just excuse a, some of the long-range efforts this afternoon. Yeah, that one was just a total miscue. <laughs> you can see how he pictured it in his mind's eye, though. The shot was on. Can't blame him for having a go from that territory. And Franco Lino has come on as well in place of Eli Adams. Victory is still committed to playing it out of the back. Playing themselves into trouble. Nice move on the turn from Hamakiotis. In fact, it's Adams in the advanced position. It was Volupale who came off. The spillage doesn't fall to the substitute, Lino. And so we do get a nice little chance, albeit with the final 10 minutes of the game, to see Eli Adams play in his preferred position on the left-hand side of a front three. He can be really electric on his day, so with the shackles off, let's see what he can do. Maybe that's the reason for bringing Franco Lino on to unleash Eli Adams. Mazanowski. Probably still be thinking about that moment of miscommunication with Ryan Lethleen that led to United grabbing their second goal. Speech sliding challenge from Will Wilson. Camilleri trying to say that he got the ball in that challenge. I'm not sure I quite saw that, but definitely had a different viewing angle to the referee. Lino scrapping in the middle to win it back. In the end, it was Menelau who won back possession. Hamakiotis. Deyu. Dealt with quite comfortably by him. against Melbourne victory right now. If anything, that second goal from Sabitin Gore seems like it's almost totally taken the wind out of victory sails. There's no mean feat on a day like today. No, very good point. Here's Doradovic dropping off the front line. Had a bit of a difficult day, I think. Adam Doradovic has never really got the service that he would have liked with the deliveries in the middle. More often than not, he's been sort of the, the dummy to allow someone else, a, a third man runner or a winger tucking inside like Nish Volupale to latch onto a cross. But they haven't found the finishing touch and I imagine Adam Doradovic might be thinking, maybe you guys should be crossing those into me rather than using me as the, uh, as the cover. Certainly been uh, restricted to running the channels on occasion. Western United are going to pump that one pretty much for territory. And Josh, you were saying that if, if there are any Preston people 
watching on this live stream that might be celebrating the result. Well, we do have uh, <laughs> Draghi Kostowski who comments on a game between Victory and Western United. Go Preston. <laughs> Keep your Facebook live comments coming through, as well as your Twitch and YouTube comments. Football Nation Radio, we're streaming across all three. And we stream the world game throughout the week as well. Plenty of radio shows. Victorian, Australian, European football. You definitely get a chance to review this game on the NPL Victoria podcast this Monday from 6 to 7. Play a surprise at the lack of whistle there. The confusion. Western United might be able to come the other way. Nidowski is hunting that one down. Undersized in the battle with Ryan Lethleen, though. To be fair, most are. <laughs> what do you make of Ryan Lethleen's transition to centre half this season after playing much of last campaign up front? I'll answer that question. It's uh, sort of the reverse Jamie Hardwell. I'll answer that question in just a second. There's space here for Weston. Wallati back inside, trying to free the feet. That time, Charbel Shamoon, he's still got the ball, and Gore was hoping he could reach it before Ryan Lethleen. But, uh, yeah, I've got to say, Josh, I don't know how convinced I've been Ryan Lethleen's new lease of life in the centre of defence. Another pick up. It's Laval cutting it back for Kokonkowski. Never looked like troubling Ahmed Taleb. It is fascinating what some coaches see in certain players. Completely different future, certain I mean, qualities that they prize. Certainly looking at him physically, you can, you can see a, a central defender there. But I do think sometimes that positioning particularly has been something that he struggled with. And Gore picking the pocket. Here he comes from beat and Gore. And now the chance for Lati has put it straight at Taleb. That was a big, big chance to bury this game even more than six feet under. Just looks like it's going to peter out today for victory. And Western United might have saved their hopes of a top two finish. Wilson, nice little reverse pass for Adams, directly there, and now Doradovic couldn't free the feet and get it loose. He eventually did, but another save from Mudalia, who has had a really solid game. You can see why he's been able to unseat Charlie Emery from that starting keeper spot. Victory with the quick corner at the near post. Bozanowski going for the side-footed volley. Agwe went down in the box. Western United want to, wanted a stoppage. They didn't get it. In from Wilson across the face. And Bozanowski was just an inch or two behind it. Well, nearly moments, misconnections. Story of the afternoon for Stop victory. me if you've heard this before. <laughs> exactly. I feel like we're starting to repeat ourselves, but so are the attacks for victory. Petering out. curious because Western United haven't exactly had an answer for that pattern play from victory, particularly down the right-hand side. And while they have coughed up a lot of openings, particularly to Will Wilson in that channel, they haven't once been punished for it. Taleb letting it run across his body presence of Sabine Gore would have made him feel awfully uncomfortable. Kokonkowski, as the fourth official, is getting set to add three minutes onto this contest. Western United can pretty much reach out and grab the three points at this point, but maybe victory have a different idea. Will Wilson off the post. In fact, it might even have taken a deflection en route because victory have won themselves a corner. Certainly got plenty behind that, Will Wilson. Agonisingly close again. As he 
say, look, he just took a little touch on the way through. They had have scored that these final three minutes. Beyond for young and old. They might still have a chance here. Ball towards the back post. Missing the air by Mudalier, and it's Kabete again. Wide on the header. It's just shot after shot after shot. Can't trouble the Western United goal. They have piled on the offensive pressure today, victory. They have not made it count at any occasion. Set to go through these 90 minutes goalless. They've got three minutes of stoppage time added. Any goal for victory looking more and more like a consolation. But stranger things have and indeed do happen in the NPL 3. Got a mountain to climb though here, Lockie. Mm. Shamoon. No handball. Victory allowed to continue. Menelau. This pocket picked by Nidovsky and Camilleri. Camilleri eventually will pull it back. Tried to play advantage. Not sure how advantageous it was for victory in the end. But I guess that's the whole point of advantage. Adams. A little space on the right here, launching some step overs, not to any great effect. Wilati to the path here of Laval. Western looking more likely at the moment, up against Franco Lino. And he's more than happy, the substitute, to run the ball into the corner and help to eat away some more of the valuable seconds that exist in this game. Poor pass from Adams. The rebound is going to fall for Menelau. Not quite sure what he was thinking there. Fizzing ball for Duradovic or the chip over the top of the advanced Ryan Mudalia. He didn't really pick either option, did he? he sort of split the difference. And so Western United now are going to set themselves for a massive flurry Four games to end the season. Level on points now with victory in third. And Preston, Ballarat, North Sunshine and Geelong. Their final four. So they have given themselves a chance. Do Anthony Frost's side hold it in the corner? They don't have to. They don't have to hold it in the corner because they have all three points. Luke Camilleri blowing full time on a smash and grab here at Epping Stadium. Melbourne victory came out of the blocks quickly in this second half, but it was a moment of inspiration, a moment of magic from Yanni Panakos, striking from about 25 yards past Ahmed Taleb into the top right that really blew this game wide open. Victory had more chances, but they could not find the finishing touch. And then in the end, as they were pressing for an equaliser, they shot themselves in the foot. A mix-up at the back saw Sabidin Gore score his seventh of the season and pretty much wrap up the result for Western United. And it is a result that really does throw the cat amongst the pigeons in the top two promotion race. Western now level on points with Melbourne Victory in third place and a big, big chance now for Western despite trailing second place Preston in by eight points. A big, big chance for them if they can win at BT Connor Reserve to give themselves a chance of ending in those top two spots for Victory. It's now back-to-back -back losses and they have a difficult away trip next week, obviously. Towards the bottom end of the table are Ballarat City, but some of the biggest sides this season have shown that it's not an easy place to go. Their run to close out the season, Ballarat City, North Sunshine, another big away trip to Geelong, and then Nutter Wadding to close out the year. So that chance of landing in the top two, looking a tough one for victory. Now eight points they trail with Western United. Behind Preston... So, as the uh, wind is going to blow us away here at Effing Stadium, uh, the tape is giving way. We're going to call it here 
from Football Nation Radio, myself, Lockie Flanagan, and from Josh Parrish, manning the camera and the microphone today. Thank you very much for your company. Uh, we'll endeavour to bring the remainder of Melbourne Victory's home games to you for the remainder of this season uh, live. And you can catch it on the Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch FNR channels. And until that time, we'll see you again soon.